Welcome to this intro to PostGIS. In this video, I'll cover how to get a working version of PostGIS running on your machine, as well as a graphical user interface so you can manage your installation through a browser. The fastest way to get an installation of Postgres with the PostGIS extension is to use Docker. If you're not familiar with Docker, I would definitely recommend finding some videos on what it's capable of. But the elevator pitch is that it allows you to build, run, and manage containers on your machine or on servers. The term container is also confusing, but you can think of it as a small virtual machine that has all the executables and code it needs to run a specific program. It also eliminates the phrase, well, it worked on my machine, since it standardizes deployment everywhere. It also allows us to use the same commands to start Docker on Windows as on Mac and Linux. If you're not using Docker daily, once it's installed, I take the time to turn it off from your list of startup apps. If we go to the Docker Hub website, we can see that there's already an official PostGIS container, and so we'll reference that when we build our own. Switching over to the command prompt, we'll start by creating a Docker network so the container with the GUI and the container with the PostGIS can talk to each other. We'll just call that pgnet, and I'll put all of these calls down in the comments. All right, so now we can start building our PostGIS container. So we start with docker run, give it a dash D so that it runs disconnected, give it a name, and reference the network that we created above. We also need to give it a few more arguments, such as an initial Postgres password, and an initial database. Um, I'm referencing Flight Radar and FR24 um, because that's the data that we're going to be working with in later videos. You have to open up the port that we want available from this container, which for PostJS and Postgres is 5432. So the external port and the internal port. and then the container name. And this has to be the container name that we saw on the Docker Hub. We hit go and it will download everything for us and spool up our container. All right, so now if we open up our Docker desktop, we've got our PostGIS running here. And if we click into it to read the logs, it says the init is complete and it's ready for startup. Um, so I believe you have to hit a restart so that it starts up. But now we've got a Postgres database available for us. Um, but how do we validate that and how do we interact with it? The best way that I've found to do that is to use a tool called pgadmin which also has an official Docker container. So to start that up, we can start with the same initial Docker run, run detached, forward the port. So this runs on port 80, but we might use that later for something else. So I'm gonna forward our local 8080 into the containers port 80. Give it the network so that it can talk to the PostJS container. You have to give it a default email to use. So we can just make one up and a default password. And then the container to reference is dpage pgadmin4. So if we hit go, that should build and start up our pgadmin instance.
And when it's done, we'll have an instance of that running here on port 8080. So if we open up a web browser, we can go to localhost 8080. a second to catch up. There we go. So we can use the email and password that we gave it a minute ago. we get to this interface. First thing I like to do is jump over to preferences, go to themes, switch this to a dark theme just to be a little easier on the eyes. To connect it to our local PostGIS instance, we do create and server. And because this is inside a Docker container, we can actually reference the Docker container name rather than the IP address. Call this PostGIS, and for the host, we'll say PostGIS rather than the address, the correct port. We don't want it using username admin, so we'll change it to Postgres. And then we have to give it the Postgres password that we defined when we started up our container. And you don't have to, but you can hit Save Password. Right, so here's our instance of PostJS running on the side here. I can zoom in a little bit. Um, the first layer is databases. And then inside of there, we've got the default Postgres database and then our flight radar database. Under extensions, we've got the PostJS extension installed, which is really why we use the PostJS container specifically rather than the Postgres one. If we wanted to install our own extension, we can just go to create an extension and then find what we're looking for. If PostGIS wasn't already installed, we could just do PostGIS and install that. When we start adding data under schema and public and tables, our data is going to be in there. We can also define new schemas, um, but public is the default one. In the next video, we'll be focusing on how to get data into PostGIS, and we'll be using PGAdmin to validate that that was successful and to explore our data.